know that this is a role usually filled by Mark Simmer of that office, who's uh, absent today. So you have to get me instead. And I'm going to be joined by Melody Randall, who uh, you've seen before, I think, who's going to be handling the technical aspects of, of questions and chats and uh, documents. Uh, and uh, also here today is uh, the director of the executive director of Deeds uh, Office of Small Business uh, and Innovation, uh, Neela Molgaard. Neela, hello. And, hello, uh, great to be here with all of you. Today's, today's topic is the ways in which uh, a small business can participate in and benefit from uh, uh, what used to be called procurement for public, uh, the public side of purchasing, uh, and is still called that. And which in on the public on the non-public side, the private sector side, uh, is now called sourcing uh, as part of the supply chain management process. Uh, so. Uh, I think that you're going to be able to find these, these very different but very interesting kinds of contrast between the two procurement on the uh, public side and sourcing on the on the private side. Uh, and we have some materials from our presenters uh, who are uh, on the public side from Apex Accelerator, part of the Minnesota Department of Administration, Christina Nabel Dickerson, uh, who is going to speak about how that organization deals with assisting businesses and getting government contracts and securing government uh, the role in, in providing uh, goods and services to government. On the private side, uh, Kristen Guild of Greater Minnesota, uh, MSP, Greater Minnesota, Minnesota uh, Business Bridge is going to be speaking about the dealing with uh, contractors who are who are large. Uh, existing businesses. Uh, what I would like to do as a practical matter is ask everybody who's listening who may have questions to please hold them until the very end, till both presenters have finished their presentation. Uh, it's much easier for us to handle the stuff at this end if you can do that. Uh, and then just feel free to inject yourself with questions, or if you want to submit written questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, and Melody will be able to uh, locate them and read them back to us at that time. So I told Christina that she was going to go first. So uh, please, Christina, that's it. Apex Accelerator. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charles. Appreciate the introduction there. Welcome, everybody. Let me go ahead and share my screen then. Got a dead screen here. There we go. All right. Let me know that you're seeing it from the beginning. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So again, I am Christina Neville Dickerson, and I am really pleased that you are all here and took the time to make space on your calendar to learn a little bit more about um, government contracting and um, how we can assist you with that and what Apex Accelerator is. So Apex Accelerator was uh, formerly PTAC, and my obvious uh, my overview is going to focus mostly on Minnesota. But I do want to let you know that a takeaway for you will be that there are APEC centers like us across the country. And I want you to have that information should you have anybody uh, that you can share that with to be able to work with you uh, in that capacity as well. So, all right. <laughs> there we go. So a little history about this program. So as I mentioned previously, we were PTAC and we were administered by the Defense Logistics Agency. And we moved to the Department of Defense Office of Small Business Programs. And they announced that our name would change from PTAC to Apex Accelerators. And PTAC was Procurement Technical Assistance Center. The name change is phasing out and uh, it should be gone completely by about September. But if you still see PTAC someplace, please know that PTAC and APEX are the same program, same staff, same services, and we are here to assist you with your contracting efforts. 
So PTAP, the Procurement Technical Assistance Program, came into existence in 1985 when Pro um, Congress decided that the federal government should be doing more to integrate small businesses into the government marketplace, and that doing more business with small firms would, in turn, stimulate economic growth. Guidance would, of course, be required to assist small businesses in navigating the government's red tape, and upon any successful establishment of the nation's PTAP program, PTACs then were formed and put in place all across the country in order to assist those small businesses on a more regional level. So as mentioned, we are now managed by the Office of Small Business Programs, and by means of cooperative agreements, we have matching funds, and that allows state agencies, college and universities, or other various nonprofits to further fund the Apex Accelerator programs, allowing the type of assistance at every state. Some have regional programs, while others have a statewide program. Here in Minnesota, we offer a statewide program. And so we are under the Department of Administration and we are State of Minnesota employees. So Apex Accelerators in the plural form in the, as a collective group, um, we are centered across the country. The mission and vision are clear and definitely lean toward the defense industrial base or the DIB and the efforts to replen replenish the supply chain. It has steadily declined over the past 10 years by about 40%. The government industrial base includes all the civilian federal agencies, as well as state government, along with counties and cities. So again, all levels of government contracting. It's really important to know the breadth of our nationwide centers. There are 96 uh, centers across the country operating about 300 offices. And those offices and the passionate professional teams that work in the APEX centers are truly the bridge between the buyers and the suppliers. And we are here to ensure reliable service, better quality and lower cost to the government, while also assisting businesses to navigate the sometimes very confusing expectations and differences in the federal, state and local government opportunities. So in Minnesota, again, we became a program in 1991. And we were a program at Minnesota Project Innovation. Those of you that have been around a long time may be familiar with that organization. And we were there until 2003 um, when we unfortunately lost our funding. Um, and that was when we were under Governor Ventura. So then we were moved over to an organization that some of you may also be familiar with, which is MEDA. And we were a program within MEDA from 2004 until 2017. Um, and then their mission is definitely to assist um, businesses that are BIPOC, um, entrepreneurs that are BIPOC, and they decided that uh, because our APEX, then PTAC, focuses on assisting everybody and they wanted to focus on their mission, which is the BIPOC businesses, that we should find a new home. So they were able to find a landing spot for us within the Department of Administration in 2017, and that's when we moved over. So this is the landing page at the state of Minnesota's Department of Administration. And you'll see here that there are several links to choose from. Um, you'll see the request for services area, uh, the different services that we offer, our counselors, so you can find all of their contact information, different resources that we also link to and find information from, and then of course our events and training. This, um, the program video that is there, it's, it is a YouTube video. It's probably going to go away pretty soon. It's a little bit antiquated, but um, it is still a good information. It is um, a video that is led by um, uh, Farouk Mita and um, from the Office of Small Business Programs when the program first moved over to the Office of Small Business Programs. So if you're interested in seeing that video, you can go click on that. And this would be a visual um, guide for you of where our counselors are and who is available to you. In February, we were able to fill what we had left available to our for our counselors, which has grown significantly since we started at the state. Uh, we started with five counselors and we now are a team of nine. And so you can see where everybody is located. 
and where they are officed, depending on where you are, that they can help you. If you are in a different state, or again, if you know somebody that's in a different state um, that needs those services, we would always reference um, this, uh, a neighboring state. So if you have somebody in Wisconsin or North Dakota, we would provide the contact information for the APEX Center in that area. So what are the services that we are able to provide to you? And again, all of the services that we provide are free. And the most important thing that we do, in my opinion, is offering one-on-one -on -one counseling services. We do approximately 5,000 hours of one-on-one -on -one counseling each year. And that may be in person at your location, or it could be at our offices, um, which we are still hybrid. We are not in an office every day, so um, don't show up if we're not there and you haven't made an appointment. Um, but we are happy to meet with you if that's how you would like to uh, meet and that works best for you. But most often the visits are still virtual via Microsoft Teams, or it could be a simple quick assistance through phone calls or emails. We assist with registrations, and that could be registration in SAM.gov for federal, or it could be in the SWIFT system for state. And then we can also help in identifying which certification could be most appropriate for your small business. That could be the federal 8A program, hub zone, or the historically underutilized business zone. Um, WASB, which is for women, the VOSB program for veterans. At the state level, there is the TGEDVO, the targeted group, economically disadvantaged and veteran owned. Or at the local level, there is CERT, MNUCP. And of course, commercial, there are WBE and MBE for women and minority businesses. There are opportunities all over the place and we can assist you in the growth of your business along with working with primes and various agencies. We also assist primes and the contracting officers in finding potential vendors such as you um, based on the industry and the appropriate or needed socioeconomic categories. So the certifications, as I mentioned, like the women, minority, veteran, or any of the place-based certification, those are goals and expectations that are out there for primes and agencies. So we help them fulfill that by um, helping identify who some of the vendors are in certain NAICS codes, in certain uh, geographic areas, things like that. So back to the small businesses assistance that we give, we can help go through market opportunity assessments, help figure out how to conduct a competitive analysis, offer an electronic bid match service. And that service is a very popular thing that we offer be also because it's free and people have very valuable time and sometimes have um, small amount of, of staff. And so that is built on keywords for your industry, the NAICS code or the North American Industrial Classification System code, and your geographic, your geographic capability. And when we put that together, then opportunities are emailed out to you, um, could be on a daily basis or weekly, based on the created criteria that you have with your counselor. And you should work closely with your counselor to ensure accurate and useful profile, and you can keep updating that until it is um, working well for you. Again, other services that we provide include assisting with pre-bid or post-award guidance, Compli complying with the FAR, which is the Federal Acquisition Regulation, um, wage determinations that are higher than minimum wage, along with keeping current on new rules and regulations in the contracting arena. And any of the um, cybersecurity, for example, is a very large topic right now. It's ever changing and vendors want to make sure that they are up to date. And we can also help go through proposals and payments and assist with invoicing to make sure that businesses are paid on time. So I've mentioned training a little bit, and in Minnesota, we offer some sort of training uh, virtually almost every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. And those topics vary, and every other month we try to alternate between state and federal topics. So obviously there are many topics that touch on various contracting um, areas, but we try to hold to the um, alternating of the state and federal to, to keep that schedule. Um, but we also offer a tri-state webinar series that's offered once a month in connection with North Dakota and South Dakota, and that's with the Apex Accelerators and the SBA, or the Small Business Administration. And um, we also have a Foundations in Government uh, Contracting Series. Now, that was born out of something called SADBOC, and many of you may be familiar with that. That is the Small and Disadvantaged Business Opportunities Council. And that is um, made up of local, state, and federal government agencies, as well as service providers and associations. 
And what was happening is they were seeing vendors that were entering the supply chain, bidding on projects, and they weren't quite prepared to be contractors. They weren't ready to be at the government level, and they ended up failing. And that's definitely something that we don't want to see happen. We want to make sure that businesses are totally prepared. So we created a curriculum for the series that allows participants to become much more confident and competent vendors. And so this series is offered um, twice a year, usually leading up to our procurement fair. So some of you may have um, attended the 25th annual Sadbach Fair that we just had at the Heritage Center in Brooklyn Center in April. And then um, we offer a fall one in Greater Minnesota also. So there's also a SAM.gov class. In fact, that was what was offered this morning. And we, as I mentioned, procurement fairs and other classes that aren't listed, things like FOCI, which is Foreign Ownership Control and Influence, or Auditing, or SBIR and STTR, or SIBR and SITR, depending on what part of the world you're from, how you pronounce that, um, GSA contracts, etc. And so about 75 to 100 different training classes every year. And our next class is next Tuesday on the 18th, which is exploring federal contracting, the basics. And then on the 25th is federal contracting, a deeper dive. And as I mentioned, the Greater Minnesota Fair, if you want to save the date, that is going to be the 20th annual Greater Minnesota Fair on October 24th in Monoman, Minnesota. So we are very excited that um, this is a little dated, but it's really important information that in December of 2022, the Department of Defense and the Small Business and, um, Administration signed an MOU or a Memorandum of, of Understanding that better meets the needs of and further advances the opportunities for small businesses ac across the country. So those efforts will move forward in partnering with not only the SBA, but the SBDCs or Small Business Development Centers and the WBDCs or Women Business Development Centers and other organizations to help with certifications and equity and contracting, not only through um, general counseling and things like that, but also through the 8A HUBZone uh, WASB and VOSB programs. So with that, here is the contact information. And as a friendly reminder, Apex Accelerators across the country are available to you and here to help. Um, this is just a quick overview of the services that we have, but please feel free to reach out with any specific questions or if you need assistance finding an Apex Accelerator near you. If you're not from Minnesota or if you have colleagues or kinfolk in another part of the country that could benefit. And again, thank you for your time and I'm looking forward to the rest of the session today. Thank you. Christina, thank you very much. Uh, and for those of you who may have just joined or didn't join right at the very start, I asked if everyone would please hold their questions until we've done both presentations. Uh, and so the second one is going to begin now. And for this one, we have Christine, uh, Kristen Guild of Greater Minnesota's Business Bridge Program, uh, uh, Greater MSP, I'm sorry, Greater MSP's Business Bridge Program, which uh, does the other side, which does uh, the sourcing, assisting businesses with dealing with large corporate uh, clients who want to source their products and services from small businesses. So, Kristen, if you could go ahead and talk about that for a bit for us. Yeah, thanks, Charles. Um, I realized that I went to screen share um, without having unmuted, so I was about to um, about to you know do year four of the uh of the forgetting to unmute uh problem that we've all been dealing with but caught myself um great to be here today um this is a fantastic uh double billing um to feature uh, opportunities for contracting with both um the public and the private sector um for for leveraging procurement or or sourcing if you call it that some folks are um calling it supply chain um, so procurement, sourcing, supply chain, all of the above, um, how to leverage that for small business growth. Um, so kudos to, um, to Neela and to Charles and Mark at Deed um, for brainstorming, uh, putting those, these two topics together. Um, and Christina, um, thanks for that presentation. Um, it was 
um, very instructive to me. I've been um, I've been intending to reach out and learn some more about about APEC. So glad to be here today. Um, so I'm Kristen Guild. Um, I work for the Greater Minneapolis St. Paul Partnership, um, which is a public private partnership that is focused on driving inclusive economic growth um, in the 15 county Minneapolis St. Paul region. So not all of Minnesota, but um, the initiative that I'm going to be talking about today actually does touch on all of Minnesota and I'll note that um, in a moment. Um, so the Greater MSP Partnership, um, just for some context, uh, is comprised of over 300 organizations, um, and that includes um, cities and counties in the Minneapolis-St. Paul region, um, foundations that are focused on economic development here, um, and then also uh, large and mid-sized firms. Um, mostly who are located in Minneapolis, St. Paul. I'm adjusting my camera here. Is that better? Um, I have I have two screens up, and so I have I can like so that I can see uh, see you all in the audience on on the other screen. Um, but at my home office here, my studio is a, is a little bit little bit limited. Um, okay, so um, that's Greater MSP. Um, and then there are a number of ways that we as a partnership go about driving inclusive economic growth. Um, and that includes several of these approaches um, that are noted here. Um, I'm here today to talk about the work that we're doing in procurement. Um, and we're working with 18 of the largest corporations that are headquartered here in the Minneapolis St. Paul region. Um, so I lead an, uh, an initiative at Greater MSP that's called Business Bridge. Um, this is a coalition of large corporations, large corporate buyers, and Minnesota suppliers who are working together with this aim of driving growth. Um, the corporations that are engaged with Business Bridge are all headquartered in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, they have all made a commitment to drive local economic growth um, by leveraging their purchasing power. Um, and so they've committed to purchase more of what they need locally. And they've set these uh, three explicit goals for themselves and each other, um, including, including increasing their local spend um, by at least 5% annually. Um, these are big numbers. Um, so the, the companies that are participating um, with Business Bridge now, um, in the last year that we had um, the finalized reporting figures, um, which was 2022, um, had their local spend of $9 billion. Um, so 5% of that is coming on to $500 million. Um, so these, these are big numbers here and big opportunity. Uh, the Business Bridge companies have also um, committed to increasing specifically their local diverse spend um, by at least 100 million annually. Um, and the baseline number for that is 550 million. Um, so we would be looking at at least 650 million um, uh, for the next year. Um, and then they've also committed to increase the impact of their work together by uh, doubling their membership. It was 12. Um, now we're at 18 companies working together, corporate buyers, um, and getting up to 24. Um, and we're planning to add um, to add some corporations um, yet this year and next to increase the impact. Now here's where the Minnesota impact comes in, uh, because the way that these companies are defining local is all of Minnesota. So suppliers from throughout Minnesota have um, have a significant opportunity to sell more to these 18 corporations that are headquartered here in the MSP region. Um, we're focusing right now on services that um, that were collectively identified by the 18 corporations where there's lots of demand and with strong potential to buy locally. Um, so across the companies um, that are part of Business Bridge, we identified over $4 billion in just a single year um, across these categories. Um, and these are all you know, headquarters operations type categories. Um, nothing super surprising here, I don't think. Uh, but if your company is operating in one of these sectors or closely adjacent, this means that there's opportunity here for you um, with this commitment. Now, the Business Bridge companies aren't exclusively 
targeting these categories for this local spend, but these are the areas where we're working really intensively together to increase that spend. One of the things that um, that we've put together is a supplier toolkit. Um, so knowing that these big name brand big name brand companies um, that are headquartered here have made this kind of commitment um, to increasing their local and local diverse suppliers and knowing that they've identified areas with some really significant demand of course b2b companies um, will want to know well how do i pursue this um, so something to note um, is that bidding opportunities with corporations um, unlike the public sector are mostly by invitation um, so these bidding opportunities aren't published anywhere like public sector contracts are. Um, so you really have to know how to how to go about both finding the opportunity and making sure that you get invited. Um, so we've put together a supplier toolkit. This is online um, at the link there on the slide. Um, it is free to everyone. Um, it's intended to be specifically for, for Minnesota companies, uh, but there's no firewalls set up. Um, as, as Christina noted, you know, if, if you have friends, colleagues, business associates, a cousin um, who is working elsewhere in the country and um, wants to get some of these tips, by all means, um, they, they, can log, they can log on and um, there's no kind of barrier. Um, it's intended to help suppliers figure out how to learn about corporate contracting opportunities um, and establish relationships with corporate decision makers um, and to assess their own capacity. Um, to take on corporate contracts and to really be successful in both pursuing them and delivering on them. Um, so the, the supplier toolkit um, starts with 15 articles. Um, uh, they're online for you all to explore. Um, we hope to be um, adding content here over time, um, but this is a good span of you know, places to start. Um, and then I'll touch briefly today on, on two of these to just give you a flavor. Um, so corporate buyers uh, refer to suppliers who are ready per to perform well on contracts with a large corporation as contract ready. Um, so this particular toolkit article um, gives a number of criteria of the criteria um, that corporations use to evaluate a prospective supplier, um, and it offers a number of tips for ensuring that you can meet them. Um, so as, exam as an example, um, com corporations will look at what the total revenue is of the supplier um, relative to the contract size. So a a an example would be, you know, a corporation that anticipates a awarding a $2 million contract is unlikely to award that size of a contract to a company that's maybe just doing 1 million in revenue or you know maybe even 5 million in revenue you know that would be um a, a potentially significant risk for the corporation to award a contract that's you know nearly half of the annual revenues of that supplier so it's something that they're going to look at um that they don't generally have hard and fast rules about that um but it's something to keep in mind and something for you as as a prospective supplier to keep in mind as well um, corporations are also really interested um, in knowing if there's an account team in place um, and making sure that there's going to be the infrastructure that, that you as a supplier have the infrastructure and systems that they need to be able to deliver on their contract. Um, are you well capitalized? Can you um, work within the corporate payment and invoicing and work order system? So a couple of those that are very commonly used are Ariba and Coupa. If you have experience with working within those, um, those systems with other large companies, you would, would definitely want to highlight it in a pitch because that um, goes to uh, your credibility as a supplier and also to um, uh, the any sort of concerns that the buyer might have in, in terms of like how th if this is going to work smoothly for you to be um, working on this contract with them. 
Um, legal and compliance adherence is also super critically important. Um, Christina mentioned uh, cybersecurity, and this is an arena where um, some of the offerings that Apex gives um, might be beneficial, even if you are not yourself planning to pursue government contracts, because there's some cross ap applicability here. Um, so corporations are just as interested in cybersecurity and your ability to ensure that as the government. Um, so if there are some tips that you can get um, from Apex on that, that would be, you know, like a great way to give you give you a leg up. Um, there are also a number of corporations that sell directly to the federal government. Um, and so some of the compliance um, requirements that the federal government has of them are, of course, passed on to their suppliers. So again, even if you're not necessarily targeting federal contracts yourself um, and are focused more on business to business work, um, there could really be some trainings that Apex offers that would have good applicability. Um, the other point that I, the other article that I just wanted to touch on here today, also to just give you a flavor, um, is uh, how to build relationships with decision makers. So as I had noted, most of the corporate contracting opportunities um, are bid by invitation um, only. So building relationships with buyers is critically important for working with, um, with corporations. Um, and the first step of that is to identify the right contact. Um, so the article provides, you know, 10 strategies to make these connections, to build and establish and develop these connections. Um, of course, the first the first and, and probably most important is identifying the right contact to build that relationship with. Um, many of these companies, you know, you might think, well, I'm going to make a I'm going to build a relationship with um, with the procurement staff team. Or if you're a diverse supplier, um, you may meet um, supplier diversity managers within these companies. And by all means, um, build those relationships. Um, those relationships can open some doors for you within the company. Um, and those folks within these corporations are generally not the, the uh, decision makers about many of the contracts. Many of them are actually made uh, by business unit managers within the company. And so um, depends on the sector to a certain extent. But in many cases, um, it can be more worthwhile for your, your investment of time to identify the business unit managers in the sector that you're operating in. So say you are in the IT field, um, you probably would do better making connections with, um, with the CIO or with folks who are in their in that company's IT department um, than perhaps with you know a procurement a procurement rep. Um, to that point, you know meeting them where they are. Um, one of the tips that I've gotten from suppliers as I've been working uh, working in this field is to to um, be really active in local uh, local boards. Um, so an example from the IT sector again, um, I heard from a number of folks in that in that arena suppliers um, that they had built some really strong relationships with um, with both mid-sized firm decision makers and large corporations through serving on boards such as um, the Minnesota Tech Technology Association board. Um, so that can be a good strategy to building those relationships. Um, so just a couple a couple tips to just give you a feel, um, but these um, these 15 articles are there with a wealth of information and and tips and strategies. Um, the uh, overall business bridge uh, website is here. The supplier diversity toolkit, um, the supplier toolkit, um, it has some supplier diversity elements to it, but it is intended for um, for all suppliers, all prospective suppliers. Um, that is available on the business bridge website. Um, something that I did just want to note um, because it's a contrast to what um, business bridge is. Um, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Apex, Business Bridge and Greater MSP do not provide direct consulting to suppliers. So this toolkit um, is a resource that we have developed, um, but we don't do one-on-one -on -one consulting in-house. We do partner um, with, uh, with a number of uh, supply side organizations that do do that kind of consulting, including including Meta, um, and then we do do some programming with um, organizations such as the 
the, the Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce and the St. Paul Regional Chamber of Commerce. Um, but uh, feel free to contact me, but don't expect that you would um, have one on one consulting with either me or a member of my team. Um, so just wanted to add that note at the end here um, and look forward to the discussion. Charles, you're on mute. Thank you, Kristen. And I would like to start the uh, questions part of the afternoon by priming the pump with a question for Christina. Uh, you, men you mentioned that you do do uh, counseling for your clients. And as a, someone who works for an office that gets a lot of inquiries from people who are asking for counseling, I guess my question is, is how detailed counseling are you prepared to give them? And I'm, I'm thinking of the example of somebody who comes in and says, uh, I've, I've read through this appropriate section of the federal acquisition regulations, and I can't understand a word. Can you help me figure out what this means? Is that the mm -hmm. kind of thing you could Absolutely. Do? Yep, absolutely. We will sit down and go through a solicitation with somebody, help them help them find the solicitation, um, determine if it's appropriate for them, if, if the scope of work is something that they actually do. Um, if a lot of times it comes to them and they um, don't realize that it's maybe a set aside for a woman owned small business and they are not. And so then they realize that they are not even uh, ready to respond to that. So we can help them identify that if it's appropriate for them to respond to and then sit down and actually go through the solicitation with them page by page, um, read it, read it again, read it a third or fourth time. And then um, when there are things like the FAR um, called out within the within the document we can go into the far and, and read through that um we have a couple people one in particular that's on the call today that are far experts for sure and um go through and, and understand what that means and how to respond to that and then if there are ways of when they're um if they receive the award uh, and that's an exciting thing that we used to have somebody on our team that would say you've won an award Congratulations, you've won an award. Oh, oh now what? You know, so um, it's a good thing and it's a crazy thing. So um, we can help you both ways, how to respond to that and, and all the documents that follow up with that. Thank you very much. And then one, uh, an initial question for you, uh, Christine, uh, Kristen. Uh, supply chain management in the private sector tends not to be a straight line hierarchy. They're, it's not a question of X works for Y works for Z, uh, that it's scattered over various parts of the company. C can you give us some clues as to what, and I, I, admittedly, admittedly you don't counsel people, but just from your observations, um, how do I find who the appropriate managers of the process are? Yeah, that's um, thanks, Charles. That goes to the to the point of you know tips to finding the right decision maker. Um, and you're absolutely right. Um, uh, procurement and sourcing decisions are made, and it is extremely diffuse um, across these large organizations. Um, it's it's a little bit like um, like HR and hiring decisions, actually, where you know there's an HR department, um, but they're not the decision makers typically. You know, they're setting the rules, um, they're uh, posting opportunities, they're bringing people in the door, they're setting up the framework. Um, but then the decisions are usually made, you know, by each individual hiring manager located throughout an organization. So similarly, procurement and sourcing, um, in really in any large organization, is is often made in that sort of very diffuse decision decision making model. Um, so that's why, you know, not thinking that, you know, if you if you establish a fantastic relationship with a procurement manager that that's going to be you know your your great your great way in i mean that person can like 
is valuable and can absolutely provide you some with some great guidance um, and make some introductions. So, you know, don't throw away any relationships you have with procurement leaders by no means um, and understand that there are relationships that you'll need to build um, in other parts of the of the company. Um, so that's where, you know, that tip of uh, in the article of how to build relationships with decision makers, there's a lot of richness in that article about like kind of how to go about that. Um, lots of times it has to do with, you know, people who are active in your field. Um, so you know, I gave the IT example, you know, there are similar ones where like, say you're in a marketing in a marketing field, you know, there are all kinds of professional organizations um, working in marketing, um, many of which have, you know, very active members from the corporate community. Um, so those kinds of local associations can be a great way to build those relationships. Um, in the world that we are in, LinkedIn can also be like a really fantastic way um, to, to start to build an understanding of who who within a company might be making making decisions um, and also to see if there's you know someone you know who knows someone you know who knows someone you know who might be who might be able to make an introduction and then one more question for me and again this one goes to christina does the u.s small business administration still have its uh mentor joint venture program where it has uh, small small businesses partnering with uh, with larger businesses in uh, seeking government contracts or did that go away nope there is absolutely the sba mentor protege program um they have moved it uh, it's called an all small and they do still have that program going on so it's a perfect thing to get involved with if you're looking for somebody that's a um, more experienced larger business that can tap into um, the needs that you may have. Okay, well, please, uh, anyone else who has a question, uh, please jump in with it. Or if you want to put the questions in the chat, you can do that and Melody will retrieve them for us. So there's two uh, hands up, Charles. Yeah. Michael. Okay. Do you, do you want to ask the question, Michael? Uh, Todd, Bro Todd Brockman. Todd Um, are you going to make the slide deck available was my question. A recording of this call will be put on our website, so you'll have all the information. Great. Thank you. Uh, and this is Todd Brockman. Can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Uh, curious, you know, when you talk about business not being um, self-focus, but as it relates to facilities, cost mitigation strategies, you know, different supply chain site selection, enterprise zone tax credits, job training credits. Obviously, you know, I'm coming from a commercial real estate perspective, but any business company that wants to enter the city, the state, various parts of the state, um, do you guys, does MDEED or any other organization associated with the state and or federal partnerships have a real estate consultant advisor that can help attract and also retain um, businesses in Minnesota to help everything from retaining employees and, and reducing our unemployment rate, which is already what, 2.2%, um, I'll kind of leave it at that at a high level. That feels like deed, <laughs> deed services. <Yeah. laughs> Neil, do okay, you want to yeah. answer that in, in terms of uh, uh, Catalina's work with the business development division and the uh, people yeah. who work there as their, their uh, business development representatives? Right. So we have different focus areas within deed. Um, a colleague, of our, we have business development reps all across the state. I can put a link there. They they spend all day, every day helping companies um, relocate here, expand here, uh, stay here, thrive here. And so I'll, I'll share a link with that. Um, but yes, we definitely have that focus and uh, have a whole team Wonderful. working on that every day. Wonderful. And uh, was that the group that Gene Goddard 
was a part of before he went out to, uh, I think, North Carolina? Long ago could, and far away. Long ago and far away is the answer to that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Time flies. Uh, but yes. Yeah, okay. Understood. Now I know kind of the relation in terms of what he did and what uh, deed on this call and your team and others um, focus on. So thank you. Yeah. And it looks like we the hands up of Robert. Yes. Hi. Um, put my hand down here first. First of all, I am. Uh, with Christina on the Apex Accelerators, and uh, I am one of the counselors. I'm actually a retired federal government contracting officer and policy person, so this is perfect. I really like to see meetings like this. I see such a big opportunity for us working together and collaborating together, and especially with DEED and your role, especially within the Small Business Development Center. One of the things that I think is one of the biggest challenges, and Christina hit on this, we uh, not only uh, are dealing with federal government in the state of Minnesota, the cities and counties, but you have to understand government contracting and the flexibilities given to state, city, county governments uh, all the way, because it can be really quite confusing to companies and especially small to mid-sized companies in helping them to understand and navigate the businesses. So that's point number one that I, I mentioned. I, I can't overemphasize the importance of uh, having a business plan that does not rely 150% on government sales. It aligns with the idea of being a successful business, generating repeat customers, steady cash flow, and most importantly, sustainability. While we counsel them and advise them on all the different opportunities between city government, state government, defense department, to gain those opportunities addressing uh, disparity, if you will, um, in all those different government uh, programs. So build it into that into it. The second point is is I like to take that business plan and look at it more like a strategic plan. If they begin with the end in mind and they think of the long business potential, their long-term visions for the company, we can take it one step at a time while we together work to try to strengthen supply chain, help them plan for phased growth of that business through a lot of different efforts of teaming. I heard you mention of mentor protege pro programs or teaming. Sometimes just finding where they fit in supply chain can be quite challenging. So. Um, we, we need to manage expectations and try to guide them through a process. And um, one of the things that I personally try to do is to help them build that roadmap based on their current capacity and trying to shoot toward whatever their long-term goals and visions are. And this is something that I think uh, is important for us to work together because I see a lot of companies coming in with expectations that uh, um, they have a lot of potential, but they're not quite there yet. There's only 24 hours in a day. So um, anyways, thank you for this meeting. I think it's very good. Mr. Nadi, you operate a uh, assistance program. Uh, can you talk about your company or talk about the program or your questions? Uh, OK, uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, yeah, my name is Jude Nadi. Um, I'm the founder of Equitable Development Action. So we focus on underserved businesses. Um, but just uh, because I have brief moment, um, just announced this. We have a, a big event coming up in September. So we are organizing a Pan-African US Business Summit. And uh, based on what I heard from Christine um, about a greater uh, MSP. So I think there is opportunity there to talk to some of these uh, big uh, organizations um, to uh, discuss the pipeline and how these, um, um, investors and businesses coming from Africa, how they can be part of uh, the supply chain and how they can buy from here. So one thing we notice um, is that uh, those of us from Africa, there's always attention at the coastal cities, you know, from New York to Los Angeles. That's where Africa is connected um, from history. But uh, with the population of uh, Africa growing in Minnesota, it's important to bring up something like this uh, Pan African US Business Summit to so connect um, the business across the Atlantic. And uh, I think uh, it's important so that um, uh, those uh, um, organizations who are interested to know more, to be part of the uh, summit, um, I can share the information. And um, I also like to continue to connect. Um, for those who want to know more, uh, we, we are really excited about this. This is the first time 
uh, we are, you know, this is the first time this is coming up here after going to uh, DC for Corporate Council on Africa um, Summit for about 30 years. Um, tried as much as we can for them to come over here, but they said, no, we are small state, but we can do great things. So, <laughs> so I'm excited about this. Thank you for inviting me. Um, and um, I, I'll put some information there um, on, the, on the chat. Thank you. Anybody else? There are some questions in the chat. Um, and I think they're at uh, Christine. Um, could you provide 15 point checklist for small businesses that they should look at in order to be a supplier for the government? I, do we have a 15 point list, Bob? No, um, actually, I wish it was that simple. We have some basic considerations, right. <laughs> but as the dollar amounts go up, the more complexity it is. But in all honesty, uh, you can get a doctorate at Defense Acquisition University. It could be that complicated. But basically speaking on there, uh, um, I think the, they're basically looking at delivery of a quality product at a fair and reasonable price within the time specified. And uh, market research is usually trying to gear geared toward that type of source selection strategy and determining contract types and methodologies. If there is a specific question, I might be able to try to answer that, but uh, that's the general rule. It's uh, federal government is market research driven. There is also another person, uh, Groovy Town, um, that has their hand up with a question. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, mine is not a question. Um, it's, uh, my name is Biko. I'm a DJ. Um, I work with Groovy Town Entertainment. I'm the person behind Groovy Town Entertainment. I'm so glad to be here and um, hearing from Judy Nadi and then Christina from Apex Accelerator. I feel like I'm at the right place. Um, uh, I like the small, small business teaming up. We are a very small business, and I feel like if we team up with other fairly large or those that have been in the business for some time, uh, I feel like I could have a, a good shot at contracts or uh, doing businesses with other, uh, with other businesses. I may not be uh, ready to do like federal contracts, but I think we could do uh, contracts with other businesses, business to business, and then the team up. So I'm so glad to be here. Thanks so much, Christina. Um, and uh, I'll be flocking your uh, your office anytime soon, uh, because like whatever you talked about is what I've been looking out for. And Judy, uh, what you mentioned too, uh, I think I'll be looking for you too. Thanks so much, whoever got me here. I'm so thankful. Thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. A um, couple of questions is, uh, it says, thank you for this educational opportunity to learn about how we can connect and work together to support small businesses in Minnesota. I would like to know what the process is to find a counselor. I am interested in support with getting into the GSA and may need some assistance, guidance, and troubleshooting help. All right, so I just put at the very bottom of the chat link, it looks like, um, the link to our site, which will also be on the slide deck that you'll get um, with the recording. And it's our website, and then you click on Request Services and complete the intake form. Um, just, you know, who you are, where you're located, number of employees, things like that. And then that e that will come to me and I will send you an email inviting you to our next orientation session and assigning one of the counselors to you. And then you will be able to connect directly with one of the counselors and they will be able to walk through where you currently are, um, where your goals are. If you are already registered in SAM or SWIFT, um, if you're familiar with, you know, 
basically government contracting kind of 101 already. And um, then GSA would be kind of a next step or an advanced class, so to speak. And um, we can help you with that as well. So the first step would be uh, for anybody, if you're in, interested in having services from us, uh, the free services are all through that website and you would need to request services first. Thank you. The next um, question is, do you provide connections for small businesses who are interested in supporting the BioSecure Act? My company is interested in requesting resources to start a medical device and pharmaceutical microbiology analytical chemistry and biocompatibility testing laboratory in Minnesota to offer U.S manufactures the option to test their samples as a U.S. owned lab. That kind of sounds like it's intended for Kristen, but um, as far as, you know, there are some um, opportunities with the SBIR program and the STTR with the university system. Um, in working in that environment as well. But I feel like the the basis of that question is intended for Kristen. Okay. MCAP also, Kristen. Oh, yes, MCAP at the at Department of Administration as well. Okay. Um, I think you, you may have done this already. Um, what are the dates and times and links for the federal contracting web, webinars coming up in the next few weeks? I put yeah, the two sorry, that are coming okay. up on. I put the next two in the in the chat for the 18th okay. and the 25th. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. That's a couple of that. Yes. Who is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Could you? Can I? Can I just hop programs? in on this Biosecure Act question? Um, just to clarify, um, the resources that Christina and Robert identify, SBIR, um, and and the others that they noted are great resources um, and something to to look at before there's there's not something particularly business bridge related. Um, one other place to connect um, is University Enterprise Laboratories, um, which is a, a bioscience incubator. Um, so look that up. I'll put that in the chat as well, their website. Wonderful. OK, thank you. Uh, let me see next. Someone have a question? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just saying thank you. I was going to ask for those, um, the, the spelling and the names of those programs and the links if you had them, but thank you. Okay. You were going to put them in the, in the chat, weren't you, Kirsten? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, for small business owners located in Southeast Minnesota wanting to learn more about the application processes processes for government contracting, please. Oh, oh, that's from you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was, um, hang on. Let me get to the next question. Is there a place we can go to read success stories of small businesses in Minnesota that have successfully partnered with government or large corporations, especially in the services area? to get an idea of the types of opportunities. Thanks. So I did put a response in the chat for that. There is not a one-stop shop to find those successes, unfortunately, but um, one, a couple of ideas that I had for that would be to connect with SBA um, to see what successes they've seen with through the Mentor Protege Program, through joint ventures, um, those that have come through the 8A program um, or any of their certification programs, actually. And also, if you research the fpds.gov database, um, you can certainly see um, awards that have happened there and um, then working directly with your counselor to do some intentional market research and we can try and help you with that. But there is not one one stop for the successes, unfortunately. OK, another question is I am a newly certified government contracting supplier. My bid match has already been set up. Where can I find mentorship help to understand the process for RFP? I have little or, or no knowledge in that in the domain. 
Great. And so if you're receiving bid match already, you must already be working with your Apex counselor. So then they could be your mentor for that and you should reach out directly to them. And if you are not aware of who your counselor is, uh, feel free to go to our website or reach out to me directly. And I did put my email out in the chat. OK. I think this is outside of our. our what we were talking about today, but it says any support in terms of loans to meet payroll and operational costs as you wait for 90 days of net pay from your client. I popped right, I into could, the uh, chat a, a, just a quick note about Business Bridge related to that because, like, of course, payment terms are critical. Um, one of the things that the 18 Business Bridge companies have committed to, in addition to spending more locally, is 30 day terms um, for their work with, um, with diverse suppliers specifically. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then I'll, I'll uh, turn to, to Robert for the answer on financing for um, for those kinds of contracts. We don't, don't get a lot. In, we don't get a lot into the actual financing part of it, but as a very common question to ask, uh, ask on your, um, there are organizations like MEDA, Metropolitan Economic Development Association, as well as the Small Business Administration, and Deed for that matter too, that have various types of grant opportunities or even opportunities where you can get working capital lines of credit. Um, but even though those opportunities are there, and especially to assist the women, the veterans, the BIPOC community, uh, oftentimes they're still going to take a look at the amount of risk involved. Uh, so the importance, I can't overemphasize the importance of having a good, solid business plan so that any time you're applying for grants or loans or whatever those opportunities are, they could see the potential there uh, for working capital and sales and uh, those opportunities. The programs are there for you, but uh, I don't know who I'm speaking to in, in general, but if you're a, a part of the BIPOC community, I would consider MEDA re reaching out to them directly. Um, they do have some loan opportunities as well and, and they can help guide you through it or um, looking through the SBA website. And I want to add that if you are eligible for the TGEDVO program um, at the state of Minnesota, the target the targeted group economic development or economically disadvantaged and veteran owned certification program at the state, their new opportunity indicates that you should get paid within 15 days if you have a contract with the state and you are certified. So that's an yeah. awesome opportunity if you are certified. Next question. Our company utilizes post industrial and, and post consumer waste products to manufacture useful products and materials. We mm -hmm. strive to divert hard to write recycle um, plastics and glass from landfills. Are there resources available through the state to assist us in finding in industry? businesses to obtain feedstocks. We need many tons more waste than we can obtain locally. Hmm. Hmm. That's an I interesting. Think, I don't think we know is the answer to yeah. that at this at this right. point. Uh, I'm not sure we're the people to be to be asking that. Uh, but uh, PCA? Uh, PCA, P PCA would be my suggestion. It's a pollution control agency, uh, who, which deals with uh, lots of stuff that you and I might not ordinarily think as pollution. Uh, and uh, so I would, I would give them a call. And uh, I'm going to stop us now since uh, we're past three o'clock. And uh, I'm sure we could probably go on some more. But I very much appreciate. Uh, two presenters and appreciate their programs and thank you to everybody who has attended and participated and this is a very good good session so uh, I'm going to sign us all off thank you awesome thank you everybody thank you